can uh, just roll with something else. All right. Uh, hey, everyone. Welcome to a pre-recorded Duncan and Bo slash fiction. Uh, this is pre-recorded uh, on account of me uh, being uh, on the clock this weekend to some degree. I mean, you say that. I think it's pre-recorded just in case one of us mentions the other one's partner and then forces the other one to get up and slap the other one. And then we have to try and awkwardly edit. They're like, we don't want to do that. So this is pre-recorded so Bo can take out all the verbal joist- jostling and slaps that may happen. Man, I... All right. I kind of have... I haven't really talked about this whole Will Smith being slapped in. <laughs> And the only thing I will say, I kind of come down, uh, I don't know if you read the um, the post that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar wrote about I it. did read it. It was incredibly was, well written. Yes, I was like, that. That is yep. that is absolutely my feelings on <laughs> so I, I was like, nailed it. Yeah. Uh, that, like, this pretty just, much. It's yeah. embarrassing for everybody involved. Yep. Uh, it, like he should have been removed from the ceremony. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I know there's talk of just banning him from the, uh, the Academy. I mean, he's, resi- and- he's, he's, I don't know if you read this last night, you know, that he is uh, resigned from the Academy. I, d- I don't know what that ah, means. That's fine. Um, and I also think he's, he said he did it before the outcome of any internal investigation, which I think means he gets to keep his award, which I mean, <laughs> I can't think of any occasion where someone can get up on stage, publicly slap someone, right? Yeah. Uh, Sit down, not be removed, then five minutes later go up, accept an award where everyone cheers them. Yeah, I... All right. So the the other thing is that, that, like, groundswell of, like, well, his... You know, he was defending his wife's honor. And I'm just, like... Maybe I am a a cuck in my old age or something, (laughs) but any of the women that I date, if I were to pull some shit like that, they would be pissed at me for having gotten up in their business. I've got, yeah, yeah, like, my my wife is more than capable of handling herself. (laughs) Um, And I I dare say, if the thing is, if Chris Rock decided to... To crack any any jokes at my wife's expense, she would open a can of whip ass on him. Like you yeah. don't you don't you don't go into you, you, you do not. I told you before, like my like my my wife. I think it was like the third time she met my mum. Um, like referred to me in front of my mother as a fuck nugget. Um, so I do I do like your wife a as lot. a as a term of affection, Bo. So um, you know, so like. I get like I don't I don't know I, I like I I watched it with with the 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 cringe that everyone should have had watching something like that, um and all the all the kind of the I think actually weirdly enough um like Jim Carrey like who just appears every now and then had a really good take on it where he was just like that it's embarrassing the whole thing's embarrassing the whole the whole system of Hollywood it's kind of embarrassing. Um, and he's like that. If I was Chris Rock, I would have sued him for what was he said two two hundred million. I would have sued him yeah. for because that clip is going to exist online for all time. Well, it, you know, he also apparently Chris Smith or uh, Chris Smith, Chris Chris Rock. I can I conflated them into one. Person. You have bl- you've brundle flied them together. I did brundle fly them. Um, but apparently his ticket sales have gone through the roof on of the back end of this. Of so, course they have. You know, I just publicly invite Will Smith to smack me right into a better <laughs> tax bracket. Um, but yeah, it's it's really Cringe. unfortunate. It's really yeah. stupid. And, you know, I, I just, I'm of the mind that, like, any time that you resort to violence, especially in a setting like that where it's just a bunch of rich people sitting around having dinner, and yeah. handing each other awards like that is not a setting for violence. And no, 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 no. Uh, oh, there's a there's another thing that's been doing the rounds, which is an interview on the. I don't know if you saw this. The uh, when did we become the Jay Leno show? Um, did, did you see this? Did you see this? Um, the did you see this? <laughs> <laughs> um, I do cars now. Um, there's a there, there's a clip going around from an Arsenio Hall. Um, interview from '94 where Will Smith's on that, and Will Smith publicly um, cracks a joke at a member of the house band who is a lady with alopecia. Yeah, it's 
Uh, anyway, it's it's all stupid. Time is a flat circle, Bo. Time is a flat circle. Um. All right, so I've got yeah, uh, no. before we get into the movie stuff. Um. So I've got another story for you. Oh so, wow! So right. you and I have, uh, you have two dogs, right? I have three dogs. Three dogs. I know okay. why you would think. I know. I know why you're saying that because, like. Or you weigh them together and they may make a dog. So you just assume there's another one there as well. Yeah, it, I yeah. get that. It's funny yes. you said that because I was going to say I have the equivalent of those three dogs in just the Wonder Mud. Just the leg of the your dog that yeah. you have is my three dogs combined. So, yeah. so are I, you about to tell me you're about to get a second dog? No, 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 no. Jesus, I was about to say, Bo, what are you doing? No, no, no. The, yeah, this guy's plenty. No, the story is that uh, Johnson, the Wonder Dog, yeah. Last week, this is coming off like I just got back from a cruise and all that kind of stuff, and mm -hmm. uh, which is why I, I have so much color. And of <laughs> uh, the week after I get back, Johnson just starts shitting everywhere, and he's not on any different food or anything. And I'm like, Yeah. Oh no! Like you know, and I you do the stupid thing, which is to go online and every diagnosis online is like, oh, your dog's intestines are just Yeah, yeah, out. yeah. He's D Dr. Die. Google Dr. Google always gives you the worst <laughs> yeah. uh, result, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I I end up talking to the vet a number of times throughout the week of mm -hmm. like, you know, hey, Dr. Vet, um, my dog keeps <laughs> shitting, and they're like, okay, just you make some food that's like rice and chicken and boiled chicken yeah. so that uh, it's the most, you know, inane kind of food that you can feed yeah. the dog, so it resets their their uh, just their stomach and so forth. Yeah, and resets if it's the not... router bowl. Yeah, <laughs> it literally resets the router. That's all it is. Yeah, things <laughs> come back on like it's like that scene in Jurassic Park where, where they have to run it and then do the yeah, and everything starts coming on. Yep, that's literally what it does. Rice and chicken every single day. And the same for me. Just plain rice and chicken resets me. So. Uh, I do that, but it's still not getting better. It's been like four or five days, and right. and you know, so <laughs> I talked to my vet, and I'm like, "Hey, when can I? I I, I just want to bring him in and make sure that it's not something more serious." And uh, she's like, "Look, I, I'm I've got it kind of booked up, so you're going to need to bring him in Sunday morning, which is kind of the mm. emergency time, and just get get here early, and we'll take a look at him." And I'm like, oh, "That sounds expensive." Emergency vet yeah. sounds pricey. In the yeah. grand scheme of things, was not too bad. So I, I take him in there. They <laughs> he immediately gets gets away from me, getting out of the car, and proceeds to have yet another runny shit. And I'm like, oh come on, man! Like this is this is reflecting badly on both of us. And yeah. um, so they 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 check him out, you know, and they're like, okay, he doesn't have giardia, which you know that's really good. Doesn't appear to have any kind of blockage. Here's some antibiotics. Here's some probiotics. Mm. Um, you know, just general stuff and and keep up with the chicken and rice. And, you know, th this should all kind of resolve itself. And if it doesn't, let us know. And and in fairness, in and out of there with all the, the medicine form and everything for under 200 bucks. So I'm... That's pretty fucking great, boy. Yeah, yeah very pleased. And <laughs> so anyway... On the back of this, like I start giving him the antibiotics and and that kind of thing, and the and Johnson is good because he eats just like you know Cookie Monster, yeah. So I can just throw the antibiotics in with his food, and it will I, just get yeah. gobbled up with everything else. <laughs> and so then there proceeds to be a period of like three days where he doesn't shit at all, <laughs> and so I'm calling my vet back. And I'm like, hey, I've got kind of the reverse problem now, where this dog that had just been a sieve yeah. now isn't pooping at all. And she was like, actually, that's not that uncommon, because he had kind of emptied the chamber yeah, and is now refilling it. And, you know, give it a uh, give it a, another day or two, and then call me if, if it's a real problem. But more likely than not, it's just that his system is kind of getting back to normal, and it takes some time for all that stuff to work its way through. And I was like, okay. And, and then I realized, and he's fine now. Like the, the moral of the story, he's totally fine. Um, but I had talked to my vet about my dog shit so much that it forged this kind of closeness oh, yeah, that yeah. you don't really expect. It, like, like you have with the GP or something. Mm -hmm. And so I just called her yesterday 
and she was like, is everything okay with the Johnson? Is his stomach all, 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 all right? And I was like, yeah, he's fine, but I've been dealing with some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted your take on it, because I really feel like we've got to know one another. <laughs> hey, those rates, it's cheaper than an actual therapy. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my therapist is way too expensive for this kind of <laughs> shit. This is, like, low-level stuff. This isn't, I need to bring in the therapist stuff. Um, this is more like, hey, why haven't I shaved in a week kind of yeah. stuff? Uh, um, which, the answer to that is because that's the last time I went on a date. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last time I had to be presentable for other humans, so. <laughs> oh dear <laughs> oh. Uh, although I did go to uh, the, that interactive Van Gogh exhibit that's been touring around I don't know oh if, nice yeah. how'd you get on uh, what now I said how did you get on oh it was good I thought you said who did you get on I was like Duncan who did you get oh, on like, oh rude <laughs> um, <laughs> it was it was okay I don't know like I got the tickets as a gift and I think if I had paid for it I would have felt a a little cheated oh, yeah. you know i mean it was, was it a pilot cool. dance along again <laughs> no 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 it was cool and it was really interesting and, and it's really like it's a good experience but the tickets yeah. were like 60 bucks and i don't know oh. if it was 60 bucks mm. good like if yeah. i paid 30 i would have been totally fine with it yeah. but 60 seemed a little pricey um but like i said i didn't pay for the tickets so fuck it um yeah and uh and better yet it was a gift from my now ex-girlfriend that ah. I took a date on, which felt like I was really, you know, turning the knife. I mean, she didn't give a shit, but I felt better about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but it was cool. Um, but my favorite thing was that they had a lot of uh, Van Gogh merch on your way out. Oh, yeah. And the best was uh, there was like a Van Gogh starter kit that you could get for kids. That mm -hmm. is just the number of a local prostitute and a straight razor. <laughs> so, how are you? I'm um, like I can't top that, <laughs> nor will I. Uh, yeah, I'm great. I'm great. Uh, doesn't feel like it's been a couple of weeks since we did one of these, but then. Like I'm avoiding this uh, slasher TV show like the fucking plague, uh, yeah. so much so that you messaged me last night and were like, "Have you even watched it yet?" And I was like, "I will watch it right before we record, and I will not let it even enter my thought um, at all." And then I watched it right before we recorded, and then I made a bold statement to you, Bo, which is, "I think this is the worst season of slasher." I think anyone that says this isn't the worst season of slasher. Um, has no concept of what it is to go back to back on these seasons. I think they have had the passage of time in between them, like a year or two years <laughs> or whatever that is. I think when you go back to back on them, this one is easily, and I see this with like a great deal of confidence, this is easily the worst in the writing and the acting and the fucking flashbacks. Um, and just everything, it's just, it, it's not even dumb, it's just a complete waste of energy. Really, so yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about episode five, though. Bo. I've uh, I, back I, half and all. I've gotten to the point where if Dawn is not on screen, I just don't give a shit. Like uh, yeah, I switch off. Yeah, yeah totally uh, switch off. Uh, well, well, let's uh, talk about uh, some some movies, good and bad here, Duncan. Um, yeah. And uh, you want to go first? You got a you got anything? Yeah, I've got a good. Um, I went out to check out that new Ty West movie. That X. Oh, yeah. Um, really, really, really good. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Like, thought that was... It, I think it's, it's, an interest, it's an interesting thing because I think instantly when that movie came out, there was a, like we, like we do with... I think horror might be the only genre that actually fucking does this, where, like, you, you instantly start talking about legacy of director. Like, very early in a career, Ty West was one... Like, as soon as Ty West had the innkeepers out, people were saying Master of Horror. Like, straight away. And, I mean, that was essentially his third movie. If you remove Roost from it, which was an indie movie, if anything. Um, you know, people are instantly talking about that. And, you know, Sacrament got a bit of a... You know, a bit of a backlash. 
um not a terrible from movie. A, the, the marketing on that was the real yeah yeah it, i like the, the thing is i've watched my initial view and i wasn't a fan i've watched it twice since then the last time i watched it i was like this is a really well put together movie it's just it's just familiar you yeah. know the, as big as biggest issue is that it, as biggest issue is that it claims to be in a, it does the reverse of every other horror movie where it claims to be a completely original story and it's clearly Jonestown right whereas every other movie does the based on a true story where it's clearly not a true story so yeah. like it's the, it's the reverse of that um but you know he's obviously been away he's done some stuff he's done some tv um etc so him coming back with e24 was really interesting and then before it came out over here we'd already heard oh he shot a prequel to this movie and i was like well that seems a bit strange because that's not what e24 does e24 has never released a movie that has a sequel everything oh, yeah. everything that yeah everything that label is done is standalone so that's 10 years of movies which are one and dones. So I was like, that this is like even even more bizarre. Um, and then the news that had come out that he'd filmed at the same time. Um, so basically back did the Corman approach back to back. Uh, what to use same locations, same actors. Um, and then I watched it and I found it once again, not the most original thing I've ever seen. Funny, dark incredibly well shot uh, very referential to the, the the horror genre and in a way when it finished and i was like oh we're getting a prequel to this i was like i would watch that prequel and i am not a prequel guy i am i'm the exact opposite I, i'm like like as soon as you start making prequels all you're doing is creating plot holes in the movie that i've just watched because you'll not answer everything or you'll miss a point and i'll be like well that doesn't tie into that logically um but yeah i'm, I'm like totally in for it so i i thought it was really 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 good i think the only negative i would say and i would see why people would say it is i think there's a laziness in saying what the comparisons to the movie have been from a market point of view is as boogie nights meets the texas chainsaw massacre mm -hmm. it's boogie nights in that it deals with porn but it doesn't deal with porn like Boogie Nights deals with porn. And it's, you know, it's it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre in that it's a house in the middle of a field in the middle of Texas and there's an old couple. They're a little bit creepy. That's about the extent, like, of the comparison. So, like, I think you, you're, you're better actually just going down the road of it's a, you know, it's a slasher. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's a, like, gory slasher movie which has a dark sensibility about it. And um, boy, does that have a lot of Chekhov setups and deliveries all the way right through it. In a way that I kind of, I got to the end and I was like, that was a hoot. Welcome back to the horror genre, Ty West. Mm -hmm. Just keep just keep making movies here because like, like I said, I don't think he's made a bad movie. Um, and I would like to see, I, I would like to see more as they say in Starship Troopers. All right. So, um... It, well done. I, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I am behind on literally every movie. But <laughs> but speaking of of, of kind of catching up, though, Duncan, Ooh. I have a movie that uh, I don't know if you recommended to me. I know Kate Pollock did. Uh -oh. So uh, th this could be like a, a little one-two punch. Anyway, finally caught up to the movie Fresh with uh, Sebastian Stan and... Daisy Ridley Jefferson. That's not yes, I name. didn't recommend that. Okay, so the I, I for some reason I thought you had also. Let me get her actual name. Her name is Daisy something, and then I just started saying words. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna give you the same recommendation that Kate gave me, and I think it's the way to approach this. Daisy mm -hmm. Edgar Jones is the yes. Uh, I'm now looking at this. I have not seen this movie. Okay. So the basic premise is that Daisy Edgar Jones is uh, just a, a young woman trying to find a guy. Nothing unusual about this. She mm -hmm. ends up um, meeting Sebastian Stan of Winter Soldier fame. And, yep. Uh, but Pam and Tommy, like it turns out he's a really good actor. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, too. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, versatile, yeah, very, very good in this. And 
Um, you know, they, they start seeing each other a little bit. He seems like a really nice guy. And then he invites her to a getaway where she is going to be kind of cut off from people and communication. And, All right. and I will not go any further with what is what's actually going on there because it, it's kind of worth the ride mm -hmm. and it's really good duncan it's ah. like like if i were putting together a top 10 of the year so far it would be on that list it is uh cool. it, it's it's really interesting and it's kind of funny and it's really well directed and the performances are all good and it gets gruesome in, in some ways that are like, oh, okay, so we're going to go here. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and, and it has kind of a, like, the, the resolution of the, of the movie is really satisfying. Um, like I said, it, the, the less you know about it, like, I, I, I even wonder if I've said too much. But, uh, you know, <clears> that, like, I've given you the, the setup that leads to here is the actual plot. Um, and it's, it's very, very good. It's, and it's really like, uh, Daisy Edgar Jones in particular is, um, is incredibly charming in the movie mm -hmm. in a way that like early on you're, you're just kind of like, I'm on her side. I think she seems like a really good person and I want things to work out for her. Yeah. And, and so when things start to get a little hairy, uh, then you're like, oh, I, you know, and she, she makes a lot of very smart decisions in a very extreme situation where mm -hmm. you're like, oh, okay. I see how she's going to navigate this. And this is really smart and also kind of plays to the weaknesses of, you know, the, the, uh, antagonist of the film. Um, <laughs> But it's yeah, it's really good. If you haven't seen Fresh, it's uh, it's on Hulu right now. Um, my biggest complaint is it really a complaint? Before I say this, let me. I, I was gonna say it might be a little a my, little long. My, my biggest complaint is that this movie cares too much. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, it's it it works too late and too hard, <laughs> and and cares too much about its customers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um I, I was looking at the runtime yeah that it's long? almost yeah it's almost two hours you can maybe shave 10 minutes out of this thing and it would yeah. be a little bit sharper but i it's still you know that... if it's made for hulu you know and once again it's what we've been saying if it's made for a streaming service now all those things are like maybe a little bit long and that's because i think the anticipate audiences will hit a pause go you know go grab a snack or something come back hit a play or you know watch over two nights or three nights or four nights or whatever yeah. it is so uh yeah no i will i will check that out let me Very let me good. hit you with my uh not bad because i don't have any bads um but one that like was really 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 interesting um in fact i would say it's one of my favourite things I've seen this year. Um, however, it's being marketed as a horror movie. And I don't know if it's a horror movie. Um, but it's... I don't know. It's occupied more space in my brain since I watched it than, than anything else that I've seen this year. Um, it's, a, it's a movie that will be out very soon, actually. I think uh, HBO acquired the rights to it over in the States for their streaming channel, but it's a, technically classed as a found footage movie. It's not a found footage movie. Um, we're All Going to the World Sphere. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a screener in for that. Speak to me at the end and uh, remind me and I'll, right. I'll hook you up. Um, I, I kinda, it kind of, it kind of blew me away. Like it's a first-time filmmaker, well, first-time director for a feature. Um, leading actress is it's her first movie, and there's something surprisingly real and compelling and ethereal. There's a, there's a quality that really made me kind of think about, <laughs> without sounding pretentious. Um, the world, the internet, connectivity. Like, this movie, weirdly, would 
the, the way I was describing it, it's like it would pair surprisingly well with a movie like Pulse, mm. even though Pulse gives you the, the kind of like like the Japanese version of what the you know the internet and technology is doing to uh, essentially the connectivity and interpersonal relationships that people actually don't have anymore in a in a country like Japan and a city like Tokyo. Uh, this is kind of dealing with if you live in the middle of nowhere America, small town America, and you are a bit niche and you don't have friends, the internet's your outlet. Um, it's where you can craft who you are and it kind of deals a bit with the reason it's kind of getting pegged as a, as a horror movie. And I can kind of see why it reminds me, it has a lot of shared DNA with that documentary HBO put out about the Slender Man, mm, you know, the yeah, two yeah. girls. Once again, would pair exquisitely with that, but it's kind of dealing with, it's dealing with the, the idea of how that can consume, you know, how an internet, like just reading on that, if you don't have the right people there guiding you or the right relationships or the right, um, the, the ability to actually face-to-face -face sit down with someone, how that can actually stunt your understanding and perception of the world. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, there is a really dark th through line, like a really dark through line in that movie that goes, but it is essentially a tour de force of a young actress who plays Anna Cobb, I believe is yeah, just like actress. she's she's really, really, really fucking good. Like really, like in that watching her, I believed that like everything she was doing was real. Um, like she just come across as yeah, I could I could imagine someone like this in the world. Um, yeah, I, like it's it's. It's a small indie affair. It doesn't look like there's a lot of money being spent on it at all. It leaves a lot up to the imagination. It doesn't really go out its way to explain much, which I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But it's not that obtuse that at the end that you're like, well, that doesn't make a, a lick of fucking sense. It, you know, you will come away with it with an opinion. But it is just... It's got a fucking incredible score as well. Like, an absolutely incredible score. Um, and it's just kind of sat there for me since I watched it and I saw it like almost close to two weeks ago and it's still just sitting at the back of my brain just kind of it's built its own Occupy Wall Street commune uh, where it's just you know it's just there and it's not left and uh, I'm under embargo about actually physically reviewing it uh, but I will be putting a review out and I will be getting the Baz on with me as well because um, like the Baz is a he's got he's got a daughter who's just turned 19 um, and I, I think his perspective of what she was like with the internet, he's got very strong views on the internet already, um, could be really interesting from two different perspectives, him being the parent of a kid who is, you know, much older with the internet and me with, you know, a kid that's turning eight this month, who is like super aware of the internet, like to, yeah. to the point that we, we bought her, a, to go off on a slight tangent, we bought her a t-shirt. Uh, last week that had the Nirvana logo on it because she saw it, she loved it, she thought it was really cool, got it, and I'm I'm one of these, I, I hate the idea of someone wearing a band t-shirt and not having listened to the band. It's just the, the, the old school mentality, so she'd asked about it, so played some Nirvana songs in the car for her, which she liked, uh, right. which shouldn't surprise me, I listened to a lot of like rock and metal anyway, um, but she liked it, and then she'd asked me if the band were still going, and I was like, well, no. I was like, hey, the singer died a long time ago. And I didn't really give her much more details about that. Um, and about 20 minutes after she came come into the house, she was downstairs. She went upstairs on her iPad, Googled Nirvana, uh, went on the Wikipedia page, found that the singer had committed suicide and did a lot of drugs. And then there was a lengthy conversation <laughs> about one, her internet use, um, uh, and two, about the band, which spiralled out in this you know, much bigger conversation. And stuff as well so she's grown up with the internet as a tool yeah it's just yeah. a device you know like if you need to know something internet um so I, I, it'll be an interesting conversation from there but first and foremost as a movie um i think it's it was getting a lot of buzz last year from the festival scene and i kind of see why critics are so high on it uh, i just happen to think along the lines of a lot of critics i imagine if you're wa watching it to be scared Maybe not. It's yeah. not. Yeah, it's not that sort of movie at all. Uh, not not even in the same sphere 
is that sort of movie, but it's it's kind of fascinating. So um, I will uh, hook you up. Uh, I I appreciate it. it. Looks fascinating. It looks like kind of my jam. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 if anything else, even if you don't like it, very much like coming true. Like you know, we had that conversation. You were like, I was with the whole movie. Kind of fell apart in the last, you know, one minute. Yeah. The journey throughout the whole thing is just really compelling and fascinating. Um, and it, like, just done in a way that I've not seen done before. It's, t- it's t- tackling a subject matter I've seen plenty of filmmakers do, but it's just doing it in a, a, a more kind of vulnerable, personable way. So that's my not bad. Actually, this is kind of fucking amazing. Um, uh, kind of slanted things. Definitely in, in my tops for the year thus far. Uh, what about you? You always watch trash. There's some trash in there somewhere that needs to be <laughs> needs to be flung out. But what's the trash? I I just want that on my my grave marker. Always watch trash. Um, <laughs> well, you keep me writing a lot of it. Like there's a there's a lot of stuff that like especially the shudder stuff where you're like that. I watched this. It's really fucking bad. And I'm like, cool. I don't need to watch that now. It's scratched that from the list. Uh, what did you? Uh, what 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 are you gonna put me off this this uh, week? Uh, also new to Shutter, Duncan. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> no, is no, no. Shutter? This is perfect. Um, yeah, thanks for setting up that little T-ball. Um, <laughs> yeah, the it, it's a movie called The Bunker Game that uh, Shutter. Oh, I'm not aware of this. All right. No reason for you to be aware of it. No reason for you to watch <laughs> it. Um, here is the premise. And, and this is why I watch it, because I thought the premise was actually kind of cool, which cool. is... Uh, there's this like underground World War II bunker, uh-huh. and a bunch of LARPers are using it for, like, hey, we're gonna go into this bunker for a weekend and we're gonna do our role play business, but yep. they're not doing like medieval kind of Dungeons and Dragons role play. It's much more like a Fallout kind of scenario of like, oh, we're gonna oh, do, cool. yeah, we're gonna do this post-apocalyptic kind of role playing where the Germans basically towards the end of world war ii just went all out on like chemical warfare and that kind of thing Mm. and so this is the society that's been existing post world war ii in this bunker is the role play side of it and anyway the the main character is a woman who uh they've been one of the problems of the movie is that the implication is that they've all been doing this for like a week or two and you're like, mm, right. this seems extreme. Like, I, I understand there's that whole Disney Star Wars hotel and whatnot where you go away for a week and you're uh, you're on a Star Wars ship or whatever. Um, but this seems like a big ask. And there are a lot of people doing it. And, right. and maybe I'm just not tuned into that culture, Duncan. I fully admit I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. You went to an interactive Van Gogh exhibit. I mean, I would I, like to, like, you're the most cultured out of the two of us. The Van Gogh LARPing scene, not as big <laughs> as you might think. <laughs> it, it's just a lot of, like, plaintive. It means something to me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, that's. Uh, for listeners out there, that is a little bit of the film Lust for Life starring Kirk mm-hmm. Douglas as Van Gogh, uh, which I urge you to see if you've never seen it, because mm. Kirk Douglas and Van Gogh in the same sentence, it goes together. Match made in heaven. Yeah. So, at any rate, Duncan, so what What? Uh, what happens is all of the main, all of the guests kind of take off, and it's really just the staff that's left Mm -hmm. and it turns out that the bunker is surprise surprise kind of haunted and it goes through this sort of like okay why is it haunted who is haunting it that kind of thing the problem with the movie duncan is that it's so boring (laughs) (laughs) Like, like everything you said just now sounds like the most exciting shit ever it sounds really good i agree when i watched it i was like oh this sounds like it may be a real kind of diamond in the rough that, you know, th- this has a lot of interesting elements. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't do that much with the whole LARPing scenario other than yet one of the characters is a little to it to be in a Nazi. Um, uh, that right. kind of thing. And the main character, this this woman who is uh, like part of the staff is, oh my goodness, turns out she's pregnant and... It, it, like it's one of those things where it, it almost feels like part of the script was written by computer 
intelligence you yeah. know where it's like yeah. okay take a bunch of horror tropes and throw it all into this script um yeah it, it's a little bit of a bummer it, it it's just really dull by the time you get around to oh here's what's actually going on the movie's over yeah and it's like why didn't you just why why don't you set this up you know pay off the like okay here's what the ghost is and what the ghost wants and let your third act really be that yes yeah. as, as opposed to the last 10 minutes you kind of <sighs> like oh all right i i guess i see everything that's going on now but at this point i just don't care yeah um, yeah yeah it's a real bummer because there has been some great stuff that shutter has has, has put out recently mm -hmm. and and i appreciate the fact that they're grabbing up these kind of indie horror movies and giving them a home and trying to elevate them you know or at least in terms of awareness uh you know like the spine of night was one that they just picked up and mm -hmm. and i think that's a really interesting movie it's not a hundred percent for me but i thought it was kind of rad and uh at least in what it's trying to accomplish and mm -hmm. you know for every spine of night and the boy behind the door yeah there's one of these where yeah. you're like it's, eh. it's, yeah the, the, there's a there's a weird uh, we mentioned it before there's a weird balance they've got um that the seller that i just saw at fright fest is this month so you'll be able to check it out and see if i was far away from my comparison is directly to fucking hellraiser uh which that movie has a hard on for so much like hellraiser with a little bit of the beyond but not as good as either but i, I know you'll check it out and i'm looking forward to our conversation let yeah. me hit you up with a doc though uh because i have been at, like binging true crime docs at the moment like absolutely fucking ravenous for them uh -huh. um it was a brand new one dropped on on the old netflix it dropped like what two two three days ago called trust no one the hunt for the crypto king oh yeah it yeah. is fucking fascinating like apps it's, a, it's not a series or anything like that it's about an hour and 40 minutes and that is an hour and 40 minutes that weaves twists and turns and leaves you in a bit where you're like is he dead or is he not like 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 still at the end of it and then then it actually has a point and like it leaves you with people saying like it's like a, a really interesting commentary on conspiracy as well in the background which i i, I love when you can tie that in uh because it's all internet slips and um and all the other stuff that's going on but there's a, there's a bit at the end even where that like we could you know they could physically exhume the body do a dna test and come back and say it is his body that's in that casket and people would still be out there saying well they paid to have the yeah test results changed and that's not how many still out there with my money it is super it takes a turn in the middle that had me going what this guy this guy like honestly i well worth your time is it like it is a it is it's one of those just shove it on in the background sit down you know you don't have to pay intricate attention to what's going on you'll get the gist of it and then and it also reminded me why i have not even part like not even remotely invested anything in Bitcoin. Yeah, that all like, seems like that. And, it all seems dodgy. There's not yeah. one positive, but I've yet to hear one positive Bitcoin story. And everyone that seems super excited about Bitcoin seems super excited to sell you their Bitcoin. Yeah. Like, so. Well, hmm. I, I, you know, the, the, I, the, this is my rule of thumb with, with any kind of currency is if I can't go to the store and purchase something with it, Yes, and, yeah, yeah. and also it needs, I know the whole idea is like, oh, it's this decentralized and deregulated form of currency. Yeah. It's like, well, that doesn't do you any good because without regulation and, and some kind of standardization where the, you can count on the value to be relatively stable. Well, this is, this is why it keeps going, uh, as you would see, in, uh, in my country, as my granddad used to say, I'm doing all these little things every now and again, because I know the people out there like them, um, that, uh, you know, the, it would explain why its value goes up and down like a horse knickers. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, it really is. Yeah. Like it never, like it, it, it never stays steady. It fluctuates like a motherfucker. And that's because... It doesn't exist. It's right. numbers on a computer. It doesn't exist. It's all yeah. It's all speculative investment, and I'm I'm just not. No, I, I don't have that kind of courage when it comes to my money. 
I yeah. like I you know what I like real estate. I like yeah, well, I, I was like, gonna say, like go, go, go and put down a deposit on your house with Bitcoin and see what happens. Um, right. Right. Like I had to take out uh or I'm in the process of like having to take out a home equity loan. Yeah. And you know how I can do that? Because I have equity in my home. You know? That's right. <laughs> because I, here is a physical thing that I owed, and the bank is going to give me money based on that, you know? Yes. And, and like, when uh, China announced, like, oh, we are never going to take Bitcoin. Well, that's, why they, that's why they cover, they cover it, like, specifically in there that that's the turning point for... Uh, well, like China said, you know, we're not dealing with this, and then the value just plummeted yeah. because everyone was like, "We thought China, like, what made you think, like, what made you think China would accept a deregulated currency? You right. fucking ass clowns! The number one economy in the world is not going to take your made up money. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I've for a long time I was pitching on Bocoin, and China Bo was like, no. We are not taking that. And I was like, are you sure? Because I've got a lot of it. Yeah, there's there's loads of it here. Please. Yeah. All right. Let me let, let me also kind of back that up. Uh back that thing up with back that up, Bo. Um, another true crime documentary that I haven't finished the whole series yet, but it's oh. been really fun. Is I've been catching up to um the confession killer that Henry Lee Lucas. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm most of the it's way fucking that. great. Yeah. And that's the you know, like I, I always enjoy a serial killer story mm. and seeing the twists and turns of like this knucklehead, this, yeah, like Henry Lee L Lucas is not a good person. And I don't mean, no, to no, the, no, 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 no. Like he is a, a terrible person who did terrible things. Yeah. At least, not... at, at least three murders. Yes. Like, I, I think maybe at the most, actually three murders can be attributed to him. Um, but so instantly, not a nice guy, boy. No, right. Like not not trying to diminish what the guy did, but those moments where you just realize, like, oh, he is so spectacularly full of shit. Oh yeah, and the police are like, oh, do you want that? Another case, another case closed. Yeah. Book him, Dano. Let's get the let's like let's let's ferry him around the country and let's just get all these uns well, all these cold cases closed so we don't have to deal with them and our books look better. What is it that? is staggering. There's there's that one where they, they literally say that he would have had to take a flight from one side of America to the other and then essentially go straight to find the person and kill them yeah. and then go right back in a vehicle and then go right back over to the other side of the country. And he would have only just made it to his work where he clocked in that day. Like the fact that anyone even thought that was plausible as a scathing indictment on the, you know, on the investigation services that were handled in those cases. It's fucking insane. Yeah. And, it, right. It, it, like, I think that it, what the documentary does a good job of is kind of speaking to this kind of knee jerk, you know, desire to uh, close cases, whether yeah. or not, you know, you just, hey, you've got somebody agreeing that they, they committed this murder, case solved. You know, yeah, no, and there's there's, a, there's no also reason. that part with like with the other police forces, like uh, it's something we don't take into account. Like, oh, if you're a homicide detective investigating a case and you don't solve it, that stays with you, especially if it's yeah. a bad one. Like that stays with you. So if someone then starts to come in with some details that sound vaguely similar, you know, the, the willingness to accept that, you know, as a not just even as a like it just closes the case, but I'd like to almost get that off your conscience. Yeah, is something that they're drawn to, and I I get it as a human element, but then you've got the and it does a good job. You get this at the end actually of it where they actually start talking to like like the victims' families who are like this guy didn't do it, you know, like yeah. there's the evidence is here saying he didn't do it, and the police just won't entertain who killed my sister or my you know my mother or my daughter. They just won't do it anymore because as far as they're concerned, case closed. Um, well, and that's. And all I, I think the other th interesting thing that they talk about in terms of just the police forces are these like local mu municipalities that have this horrendous murder on the books. Yeah. But like the biggest crimes that they normally deal with are like, you know, drunken disorderlies and stuff like that. And so yeah. when they're all of a sudden in the presence of this, you know, serial killer, then yeah. it, it's just head over water. They're like, they're not. They're, they're not yeah. equipped to deal with this and, and to have the proper skepticism 
of like, all right, I know what you're saying, but also, are you full of shit? Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, no, it's, and it's a fascinating documentary. Yeah. It's one of those ones where, like, it merits its series length. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. So, uh, well, Duncan, it, it feels <laughs> speaking of things that have a lot to them. Uh, well, let's reverse this bull. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Let's let's turn the ship around into something that is just utter nonsense. Um, the second episode, and you know, back to back episodes where this could have been handled in 10 minutes. All right. Here's the funny thing. And, and we, we took a fair amount of time in the upfront, just talking about different movies and stuff. This isn't going to take that long. Cause not that much happens in this episode. Nothing. Ha- well, no, not that nothing happens in this episode. It's just, you can compactly tell it quickly, yeah. which I don't think the showrunners of slasher know they can do. <laughs> yeah, this is another argument for slasher being only six episodes oh this, this season, season yeah hell yes hell to the yes there's there's two the problem is they've set it over a weekend yeah well it's like the previous season they set it over a day but each episode was an hour like so you know or covered like what was it three hours yeah, yeah. whatever the time frame was it covered that so you were getting like this is supposed to be happening over a weekend and um the natural breaking point for a television show is you know end of the day or like a big killing event or something and they're really struggling with that and it's not that i just feel like they're trying to drag out storylines um that's for the video people that are checking us out here um storylines ball um in a way which doesn't make sense like like they're like it's, it's there's so much padding and yeah. so much uh pandering to to nothing like non-events in this, that it becomes a bit tiresome. And then also, every character just seems to be getting progressively worse. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like on every episode, I'm just like, I, like, even the bit that made me think you were an okay character is now lessened by this episode to the point that I actively hate them all. Except um, for Don. Apart from Don, but Don's like she's immune to all the criticism yeah. we will ever have on Slasher. But everyone, including our final girl, who I'm now at a point going like that, I don't actually even know if I I understand. I understand why you're being as aggressive, but I don't actually know if I like you as a character either. If I can be bothered with you surviving, so yeah, I I agree. Like I understand why she does what she does, but it doesn't make her a very fun character. Like no. I don't, I'm not rooting for her. No. The only person, <laughs> no. the only person I'm rooting for is Dawn, and and also the orphan. You yeah, know? Dawn like, will not survive. We know this because I think on the poster of Slasher, she's one of the heads mounted on the wall. Yeah, so which... if we can get her through it the last episode, though, I can live with that. Well, so... we've only got three left. So yeah. no matter what, it, it, she's at least going to be in the at thirty three percent. You the have final jinxed three that she will die in the first scene of the next episode. I will get there. I don't think that's the case. I think we know who's dying Eaten by an orphan. Ah. Oh my god! All right, all right, all right. So this is uh, episode five. It's called Family Ties. Yes. Um, and not the Michael J. Fox series. No. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> No, it's not. Um, this one, so like to to recap, the end of the previous episode, um, the the maid died by suffocation. She was buried alive, bro. Um, <laughs> right. And so, Liv comes back to the house after her mother has been creep showed by the killer. Yeah, <laughs> she can hold her breath for a long time. <laughs> thank you and uh vincent appears behind her kind of unseen yeah like like uh like a like a fucking molester yeah um <laughs> well and she's going back to their bedroom or her mom's bedroom and finds these stab wounds in the sheets from the when florence busted in and tried to, to, to do that a silent assassination where she screamed while she was stabbing yeah. the cover die 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 <laughs> And she finally ter- realizes that Vincent's there, and she's like, hey, where's my mother? And Vincent's like, I hope she's dead. You're like, yeah. whoa, 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 man. Yeah. <laughs> like, Let's chill out. 
Which, you know, I get because she did orchestrate, as we learned in the last episode, his kidnapping. But it was yes. really David Cronenberg that... Kept you know, it going, boy. Yeah, for his life, you know, like... <laughs> for everything up to the point that he arrived back. In fact, even B Cronenberg brought him back on this island. Yeah. Yeah. Specifically to take part in this game, which is killing them all off. So just yeah. gonna say he's not there. I also have a theory about Cronenberg in this one. I now have a new theory. I think like the I think Cronenberg wants Liv to take over. Sure, yeah. Because think of all the think specifically, he's put all the, like he's he's like didn't acknowledge her, you know, sent her away, like like made her learn the hard way, hasn't treated her with the the I was gonna say the affection, which she doesn't show anyone, but yeah. like you know, hasn't hasn't given her anything really, any leg up at all. But yet look at all the challenges, including the challenge in this game. It's climb rope, you would learn that in the army. It's an obstacle course where you have to jump over things. That's army training and oh paintball. Yeah. Like, I, I don't disagree. It's all gear too hard. It's all gear too hard. Yeah, I, I could see where Cronenberg would have respect for her just because she's had to kind of do it all herself. And his big yeah. complaint with all his kids is that, like, you've had everything handed to you. Have done you've literally them. had every every advantage handed to you, and you've still turned out like shitty. Yeah, you're you're just a piece of garbage. Yeah, and, and so Vincent tells her. You know, I spent three days pissing shit myself in the back of this car before getting handed over like a pack of meat. And then he and Liv just scrap. They just start fighting. He's like, Vincent is not the smartest tool in the drawer because he, he tries to hit her, gets taken down spectacularly, thinks, you know what? I'll try that again. Guess what? Gets his ass handed to him a second time. And then... For some reason, is like three times the charm, um, and then goes in again, and then gets put in an armbar, rather vicious looking armbar, where Liv's about to snap that arm. Yeah, I like, like she's still on. <laughs> I like that she calls him a demon child. She does call him a demon child That's because good. like she's she's now had all the repressed memories of when he almost burned her alive as a child, bo. Um and so she holds on this, but I, I now like that Slasher has become, like we mentioned this in the previous episode, has basically become Scooby-Doo. Like, everyone appears at the door at the same time to see what the commotion is. Yeah. Like, like on schedule, all queued, they're all right there. And, and she's like, I'm going to fucking break his arm. Um, and Florence is feigning, like, any sort of kind of, oh, no, you need to let him go. Yeah. Should, he's, like, we're, we're, we get rid of her this episode, Bo, and I am... Do over we, fucking well we won't we'll get rid of our next episode yeah but we pretty much got rid of her this episode um yeah so theo is the one who finally talks live down is like you got to let him go don't please don't snap off his arm yeah because we're twins and i'll feel it uh so <laughs> uh florence calls her and i quote a feral little cunt yep it's on shutter so we can drop c bombs yeah and uh, which was also my college band. Uh, so the, I heard it was grindcore. It was yeah. absolutely amazing. It's uh, we we had an axe to grind. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> and Liv ends up telling Theo like, "Hey, my my mom was last seen at the dock, and I'm trying to find her." Yeah. And so they decide that they're, they're going to go search by the dock and then onto the beach. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, while Liv and Theo ha have taken off to look for her mom. Florence and Vincent and O'Keefe uh, are all kind of commiserating. And Florence and Vincent kind of tell O'Keefe, like, hey, we need to get cool with the idea that Theo is just not part of yeah. our cabal. Yes. Like, he, is, yeah. he is working for Liv, and we all agree that Liv is a crazy person. And O'Keefe, to their credit, uh, is... Like, I don't know. I mean, like, Theo seems like the only person here that's, like, a human being with a conscience and decency. Yeah. She can flip-flop, Bo, because she's so poorly written. Um, you know what I mean? She can yeah. flip-flop from episode to episode with with glee and it, with, with, with gay abandon. <laughs> like, the, the, her, or their change in this episode to being very pro-Florence pro for no good reason 
is yeah head scratch anyway i mean she's spoilers she's not gonna be on the show after this episode which is no. great because watching watching this character pivot from moment to moment is crazy yeah it doesn't make it like we're gonna have like a kind of a heart to heart with her and grace later on which oh all right well there's a scene coming up where <laughs> i'm like you know what? If that's where where the character is in life at this point, maybe yeah. death is is the best case. <laughs> so anyway, so <laughs> we'll get to it. I love that you're. I love your line as you. If you can't make an omelet, then you deserve to it's, succeed. It. <laughs> it's not just make an omelet, Duncan. It's being completely confused by the concept of a mixer. If you have reached this stage in your life and you're just like, I have no idea what this beating device is, nor how to use <laughs> it in a way that just your eyes and uh, yeah. the, the yeah. you know, even if all you had was just the root of a brain, just the part that keeps you breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. even Afra, who can't speak like a human being, speaks like a caveman, knows how to work a mixer. Right. She get, walks in and is like, ah, blender, <laughs> good. <laughs> Afra, no blender. <laughs> um, oh, man, this fucking show. So, uh, all right. But so on the beach, Theo spots the tuft of hair. That indicates like, oh, I think your Liv, that your mom is buried <laughs> up to her face here, Liv. And yeah. sure enough, we get a shot of, you know, Liv's mom like in the sand with a crab walking over her face. Yeah, and discolored glass. eye. She's only been dead less than 12 hours and she's got a discolored eye and her body appears to have putrefied. Okay, then. Yeah. And then, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Slasher. <laughs> yeah. And so... <laughs> Grace, I do like the fact that our intro music is now starting to resemble like a digital penguin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Digital <laughs> penguin, like, by just, the way, like, was like, my dance club met, uh, uh, Burgess Meredith did. Um, it was it was Burgess Meredith yeah, yeah, yeah. did the penguin. If he if he did like the voice of Megatron, um, that's that's kind of the sound of the, the intro music for Slasher. All right, let me let me verify this but i believe that burgess meredith do not tell me he voiced megatron or i'm out of here um no 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 he did maybe he didn't i i was i would have sworn that burgess meredith uh was in the transformers the movie cartoon but it's oh, Orson Welles you're thinking about. Well, it, Orson Welles and also um, Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy is because yeah. I figured like if you've got Orson Welles and Leonard Nimoy and also <laughs> Robert Stack all in the same movie, Burgess yeah. Meredith is not far behind. Oh, he's somewhere. He's somewhere. <laughs> Even if he's cheerleading in the background, he's there. Um, but yeah, like it's, it, yeah, I, I just don't get. Him. All right, cool, whatever. Um, and yeah, we're we're into the show proper, Bo. And boy, what an episode this is going to be! Uh, all right, so <laughs> here here is a detail that I really like in this episode, which is we are just turning the pantry into the makeshift morgue of yeah, this, this island. Is, it reminds me of there's a. It's actually weirdly, in a lot of respects, it is 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 making reference to. Um, Oh, uh, five dollars for an August Moon, uh, which is a which is a, like a, a Bava movie, which is also actually just based on a Christie novel. So, uh, is it, um, can't remember the name of it. Ah, uh, no, will no, come back to me. Uh, but yeah, like essentially, that's what they do in that one. As and when characters die off, interestingly enough, characters that are all brought to an island to seek a prize, and the last one living will get said prize. Uh, are you uh, which is the then there were none. Yes, and then there were none. That's basically what this is. Yeah. This is Aaron Martin's like shitty version. His you can read this on the toilet. Um, while I was taking a dump version of, and then there were none. Um, but yeah, then the pantry has become the de facto morgue where Grace is in there talking to what's left of her child. <laughs> Poor Jaden. Oh, look what they look what a mess they made of my little boy. <laughs> um, and. <laughs> So amongst the jarred tomatoes and eggs and corpses, 
Yeah. Grace is, is talking to her son. O'Keefe interrupts and is like, oh, sorry, I just came for eggs. Yeah, we're and, all hungry. I know you're not looking at your dead son, but... Right. And I, I'm just hoping there's been no cross-contamination between corpses and eggs here. Yes. But, but then O'Keefe tells Grace, like, oh, you know, I just wanted to let you know... Uh, I really thought the world of Jaden, Jaden always cared about people. And Grace is like, thank you for such kind words. You know, I think it's time for a montage. Well, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best around. Nothing's gonna ever keep me right. down. You're Sunlight streaming through the kitchen windows as these two uh, oh, crazy I kids. Well. I think this is well, like, that sentence that O'Keefe said about Jaden, you know, boy, wouldn't that be justification for a flashback, Bo? It, like, to see the good in a character, yeah. you know, like, wouldn't that be nice? Because then it would make me, I don't know, care for the fucking character. Well, it, well, I, I can't remember where he posted, but Jason, stalwart Duncan and Bo, come correct the listener, Jason Gray, yeah. um, posted uh, some link to, like, a writing for t write, writing thrillers for television kind of workshop mm -hmm. from Aaron Martin. And it was like, oh, I mean, is the class number one just flashbacks? Like, yeah, here's... yeah. Cla class one flashbacks. If you don't have a flashback, you've not written a story. Right. Uh, <laughs> class number two, look through articles on social commentary from <laughs> 10 years ago or more to get your best characters. Because like the, the, the thought, the thing that I thought about is every flashbacks and slash are designed for one purpose, and that is to like reveal how shitty people are, mm -hmm. and never to reveal how good people are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the the sole mechanism is this character's going to die. We're going to show you a lot of flashbacks in this episode to justify their death. For four seasons, we've got yes. this. Where yeah. There, there is no change to the formula, and and that's the thing that to me is head scratching. That no point, as a just as a creator, that Aaron yeah. Martin isn't like, you know what? Let's mix this up a little bit to make it fresh and interesting for both me as the creator and for the yeah. audience who knows this routine. And instead, it's just like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna give them the same old boring shit. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an Instagram fella. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's like you literally put you you put the same sheen over everything and you don't put any thought on it. But it's these sort of things that annoy me where like the you know like the younger generation of the family who are so are, are the ones that the show are kind of pivoting towards as being for the most part the you know the future <laughs> to an extent. Um they're all having these conversations about what a great guy Robin was to Theo, like letting him listen to music or like how great Jaden was to like O'Keefe, like it just seemed like he really cared. I, like I say, if you want me to like be shocked when a character dies, show me that in a flashback. Yeah. Like, like give me a hook in that will make me shocked, dismayed, despondent, or I even marginally feel something when that character's not there. But no, no, no. It's more important to spend the next scene talking about omelets, Bo. Yeah, so... Grace decides she's going to teach O'Keefe how to make an omelet. This is the point where I'm like, okay, well, we're not losing a cure for cancer no. when O'Keefe goes. <laughs> because not only does O'Keefe not know how to operate a mixer. Yeah. Um, and by the way, Florence is kind of coming into the room looking disapproving about all of this. Uh, yeah, because Florence doesn't know what it is to be a mother to O'Keefe, which you're going to find out with great poignancy and the exclamation fucking mark at the end of this episode. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's kind of in the background just going Ugh. Well, and coupled with I don't know how to use a blender Yes. Comes okay, also let me go to the stove where there's an iron skillet yep. sitting on the heat and I'm just going to grab the handle like a moron because yep. I've never learned the the basic laws of thermodynamics and the yeah. conduction of heat. Yes. And yeah. then I'm so I'm so glad. I'm so <laughs> glad that we decided to make this our non-binary character, you know, like in the TV show, to, to show how inclusive we are by making this character a fucking idiot. Right. A complete moron that serves no purpose that has no 
loyalties yeah. to anyone, no. no no basic knowledge of the world around them, and yep. and is doomed to die horribly just to prove how terrible another character is. It is a hundred percent. It yeah. it's a it's a rotten character and yeah. uh it, and I feel bad for uh, the actor saddled with having to deal with it. But yeah. All right. So here's our first flashback of the episode where Florence is, <laughs> you know, looking down her nose at O'Keefe, like learning basic culinary skills and, mm-hmm. and still not getting it quite right in fairness. But, um, and it's her literally cutting up money. Yes. To, <laughs> to make this collage and grace comes in and clearly it's happening, you know, at the family home and Grace walks in, and uh, she kind of looks at this collage, which is garbage, and is like, oh, okay, so that's what you're doing. And you're literally cutting up $100 bills. Okay, well, you know, why why give that money to charity, I suppose? And mm-hmm. Florence kind of gives Grace a bunch of shit about, like, oh, well, you couldn't appreciate art because I'm sure they didn't teach you art appreciation when you were studying about bedpans in nursing school or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and Grace, to her credit, is like, um, I think I know good art regardless, and <laughs> yeah. this is shit. This ain't it. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't it. And I, I, the one thing that the, the show gives me, which I like, is just people continually shitting on Florence throughout this episode. And this She is, is the worst. She is, hands down, the worst character in the four seasons of Slasher. I am now. I, mean, I am now in on yeah. that. I like. I like. I mentioned before. Even the neo-Nazi, like, like homophobic racist from the previous season, yeah, had redemption at the end. It was terrible redemption, but had redemption at the end. There is no redemption for Florence because she is fucking awful. Yes, and and made worse but by the fact that she thinks she's a good person or a she hundred percent thinks there's a, there's a great there's a there's a telling scene later on which sums up that character in a way where I was like that that's good writing yeah. but um, and it's and we'll get to it, but it involves her actually saying well there was only one mask yeah right and right, the person yes. going like but you shared it and she's like but but there was only one mask. And it's the it's the realization that at no point at all was the consideration not that that mask should be shared yeah. and not just purely in my face. And it's a great line. It's a great line. It's really well written. It works for that character, but it does mean we have to go through a shitload of this character's horrible art, bro. <laughs> horrible art. <laughs> oh. So we go back to present where Grace and O'Keefe are talking about spices, and Florence mm. inserts herself in this conversation, and. She says, Oh, keep watch your fingers around this one. She's got a real taste for them. Yeah. O- on account of how, ha- you know, Grace having bit off Florence's finger. Mm-hmm. Um, then we go back to our pantry slash morgue where Liv is hanging out with her mom and Theo's just kind of watching over uh, all of this. And Liv is like, I want, I, I just don't understand how anyone could hate my mother that much. Yeah. And, Liv is like, all right, that's it. We gotta, I'm done. We gotta get off the island. And Theo's like, yeah, but you told me that the one boat to get us off the island is not seaworthy. And I'm down. Like, I'll go with you, but you have to prove to me mm-hmm. that we are not getting in a boat that's immediately going to sink a trap. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, like two minutes later, they both got buckets. Yeah. Throwing right. water at <laughs> And, right, like, I don't want to end up like your mom. I mean, I know, maybe too soon. But, you know, let's be real. Like, her eyes are I unlike your mom. Can't hold my breath for a long time. So. <laughs> and and so, uh, Liv agrees, like, all right, I'll 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 get the bow patched up and, and prove to you that it's seaworthy, and then we'll, we'll take off. And on her way out the door with Thea, we do get a shot of the pantry, of just getting stacked up with bodies like cordwood in there, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, that's not terrible. Um, but all right, so then we we have our breakfast as prepared by O'Keefe and Grace, which you know which one which omelets uh, O'Keefe did because it's the one with all the bits of shell 
Yeah, and <laughs> it's the one that is that is just is just raw egg with spice over the top of it because she hasn't fucking cooked it. Yeah, <laughs> or and, mixed it or anything. It's just a plate of goop. And Dawn is encouraging the orphan, like you need to eat something, honey. Yeah, and as as that scene is unfolding, a bell rings from a cabinet. Oh, uh, dude, I thought this cabinet was going to open and there was going to be a TV in it. And I, I'm so, yes. so glad there was no TV in this one because I thought, like, has he just placed these TVs around the house? Just in case, like, I anticipated that you would destroy the last one. It was you, wasn't it, Don? Um, <laughs> For a second, I thought it had rolled into the room like that robot <laughs> that Rocky has in Rocky IV. <laughs> Uncle Polly's there for no reason at all. Yeah, right. Um, I don't, like just yeah, it's not Looks like, like we got more... another game here, Rock. <laughs> they go up and they open the cabinet and it's full of paint guns. Mm -hmm. uh, paintball guns. And um they're like, oh, paintballs. Well, this shouldn't be too bad. These won't hurt. And for some reason, and this is where I was like, I think Bo might be right. I think the orphan might be just straight up like like a, I don't know a 60 year old Slovakian militant because uh -huh. um, she picks up this paintball gun and like and like Don's like no 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 honey you're not playing she's like ah and she's like no 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 you're not playing and then Kill Theo Bill. walks in yeah, and she accidentally in quotation marks shoots Theo and Theo's like ah <laughs> yeah. and they're all like man up man it's like a paintball and he lifts it up and it's, it's, I mean, paint, well, this is where the show kind of gets things wrong. You get shot with a paintball, it will break the skin. Yeah, yeah. It'll like, leave a, it will leave it. anyway, well, regardless. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is supposed to be a rubber bullet. See, if you get shot with a rubber bullet, you go down. Mm -hmm. Right? You, do, you don't get back up. But this show is playing loose with that. He lifts up his shirt where apparently it went through his shirt. Because he's got a hole in his shirt. That's not how rubber bullets work. But he's got a hole in his shirt, right? As if this thing, you know, it, it was strong enough to pierce fabric material, but not skin. And uh, there's this, like, already, like, visibly very, very, very sore and, quote, like, well, question mark, infected mark on him. Yeah. Where he's like, oh, listen, and like, oh, it's rubber bullets. And then we get the the, the game. And this game is the least well thought out of all of them thus far. This is some lazy writing, Bo. Lazy, lazy writing. Which is basically, go out, play paintball. Uh -huh. um, you got 15 minutes to hide, then the game yep, is on. Yep, like the winner and the runner-up, or the person the winner wants to take, can go to the bunker that I have, uh, the family bunker, uh, where all the great memories are. You remember that time you had to lift mm -hmm. a gold bar from there and get electrocuted? Um, you know, like, we're going to go to the family bunker and you guys will be safe overnight. So, like, if anything bad happens, I don't know, like, a killer being on the list, um, a killer being on the list, then you're going to be fine. Now, this whole thing is very telling when we find out what the twist is, when we know for a fact... Cronenberg is behind the killings. He's not yes. the one doing it, not yeah. the one doing it, but he's behind it, which once again gives credence to the nurse. The Dr. Dr. Death. Death. Yeah. Must be because this is an employee. Yeah. This is an employee of Cronenberg that is doing this. This is either a character we have not seen yet, which I don't think it is, or this is Dr. Death. And I think this is Dr. Death. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I don't disagree with that, although yeah. I still think there's an orphan scenario because... Of no, I mean, I like, the, the conclusion of the Afro story is going to be amazing. Like, yeah. I like, like, she's like I, I'm sure I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. But, yeah, so anyway, this is the... So, yeah, we can get one person and the a person of their choosing yeah. can go into the bunker. And, of course... Like straight away, lives like, well, you guys are all fucked. And she lifts up the gun, and I'm like, I'm like, literally sitting there going, oh my god, they're all fucked. And you can see the realization wash all over them. We're like, oh shit. Yeah, she's and, actually and, trained for this. Yeah, because she's like she taking the thing apart. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like, like she did like piecing it back together, blindfolded. <laughs> right. like, <laughs> How long was that, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, you you um, ought to be able to do a 45 and 60. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So good. So good. But, um, so, yeah. So, like, Liv doesn't even waste time. She's out the fucking door. And the rest of them are yeah. all like, like, well, we need to team together <laughs> to right. take her down. We well, need, like, it's the only way this is going to work. We need to join together. Like, I'm sorry, Grace, that you bit my finger off and we had this one. But if we do not band together, Liv will take us down. And yeah. also, we think she might be the killer. So, like, clearly not the killer, but we need to band together. And so they come up with a plan, and their plan is really shitty, which is we'll just make Liv angry. She'll shoot all her bullets, and when she's out of bullets, we'll, we'll hit her. And right. then, then it's a free for all at that point because that's the, the ten years link. Is there can only be two, so like, and also there's no way to regulate this. How does Cro like what is stopping you just making a beeline? Why does Cronenberg set this all up in a cabinet? Because yeah, like the TV got destroyed, but Cronenberg couldn't know that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, he couldn't it's... know this. Like he couldn't know that the. Dr. Death isn't there to administer things, yeah. but what is stopping anyone? You have 15 minutes now. What is stopping anyone just run into the bunker? Two people just run, or everyone run it's... at work and see why I'm glad that everyone didn't run in the bunker. But like, what what's stopping that happening? Yeah. It's the purge rules of like, okay, we got to stop killing people at 7 a.m. Well, I mean, do we? Do it, we? <laughs> you know, like, that, that's, that's what that last purge movie kind of got right. Like, the rule of that, oh, the purge is over. Well, we're just going to keep killing people. Can we do that? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, like, this is all, uh, you know, b assuming that everyone's going to be on their best behavior during the purge. <laughs> so assuming that people are going to not be people, Bo, and yeah. that's not how that works. But yeah, so they go out there, there's a whole lot of, your mom was a real shitty person, Liv. Or, like, to try to, like, bait her into shooting. And, and, and very quickly, Florence and uh, and uh, picks O'Keefe most likely because she saw Keith bond with another person. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, listen, you you are clearly, you could not even whisk an egg. You clearly can't handle a fucking paint gun. <laughs> You're so, shit. You're a shit yeah. person and unable yeah. to do anything. Yeah. So what we'll do is you just hide here. Mama's going to go out, kick some ass, like unbeknownst to us, paintball champion seven years in a row. Um, like, no, I'm going to go out there. I've got a plan. Me and you're going to end up in the bunker. I'm going to come back for you. You just stay hidden. Don't get in, involved with anything. And then we, like we said, we see Liv start to very quickly dispatch people. <laughs> like, well, all right. So that yes, but before even that happens, mm -hmm. Vincent shoots Theo just yeah. because Theo's in the middle of a speech about how, like, you know, we're terrible. I'd do the same. Yeah, yeah, I would do the same. I like Vincent's being well. This is the 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 most realistic Vincent's been as a person. When he's like that, like, oh, here comes another Theo speech. Not anymore. Yeah, uh, <laughs> shut I'm, the fuck up. I'm gonna nip this one right in the bud. And oh, oh, oh there's also room for a flashback here because we go back <sighs> to Florence taking her shitty art to this museum curator, getting eviscerated by the snootiest snooty guy that ever snooted. It. This is the one moment of the show that I found really just personally satisfying. Ah, yeah, because he shits on our art from a great height. Yeah, he's I like, love it. He was like that. He's like, did you bring your art in here? Like, we saw the slides and we rejected it. Then you didn't need to bring it in person. She's like, yeah, but the photographs maybe didn't do it justice. And he's like, all right, you're one of those. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah let he, me tell you something, honey. You know, well, and he basically tells her like you're just copying other artists. You don't have yeah. your own voice. You haven't suffered at all. Like you don't have anything to say, and so you're just ripping off better artists, and it, it you're you're making nothing. Which sadly hatches the idea of what she will use for her art later on. Yes, which is just her family's pain and trauma. Uh, or so, when I say her family, I mean her sons first and foremost, and then it just embarrasses Cronenberg, who gets another great, another great table speech. Where I'm just like, it was every dinner in the Cronenberg house like this, where he would start eating something. He never someone would say something. Yeah, he'd, but like that's why he died. Oh. <laughs> That's why he died. Malnutrition. He, um, he, never, he never had, like, he had low low blood sugar and 
no iron in his blood because he would get like a third of the way through dinner and one of his shitty like, kids oh, would say Dan now need to stand up, swear and leave. Looks like I'm going to have to do it again. This fucking family. <laughs> one day I'm going to have an incurable disease and I'm going to set up a murder plot to kill them all. Yeah. Um, it's what he and whoever with... wins, I don't have to deal with them because I'll already be dead. That's what he does with all his spare time when he's not eating. <laughs> it's just hatching this scheme. <laughs> It's like the plan from Home Alone where Mully, uh, Macaulay Culkin's got like that. This is the hot iron on the door. Mm -hmm. This is the fan that blows the feathers. That's basically Cronenberg. So he's got a, like a, a hand drawn of the, like a, a crayon drawn of the island. He's like, paintball fight here, rubber bullets. Um, when they come <laughs> home, there will be mannequins dancing in the windows. It will look like a grand party. And they won't have been invited and will be very disappointed. I love the fact that you're Cronenberg. This episode sounds like a Canadian Christopher Walken. I love every second. <laughs> it ought to be. Yeah, I can't do a Cronenberg. I can do a more passable Walken. You imagine the dead zone shit. The two of them communicating. I, I Just to be a fly in the wall, oh. listening to those the, the direction and the conversation back. Ooh. You know! <laughs> I think what you're doing, fantastic work. Thank you. I like the way you talk. I like the way you talk too. It's my new favorite thing that's happened on the show. <laughs> <laughs> the guy in the raincoat. Exciting. Yes. He's a savage killer. I think that this is best illustrated by the rocking horse in his bedroom. I know! <laughs> no! It's great. Uh, anyway, so back to the present. Lawrence <laughs> Vincent and the orphan are all coming under fire from Liv. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and Florence is yelling across the battlefield, a.k.a. the, you know, 30 yards between trees. Yeah. <laughs> where... Uh, She's like, hey, uh, it turns out if I, I'll, I'll do you <laughs> solid. And when I win, I'll give you the housekeeper job because a, a position has just opened up. Such a bitch. Such and, a bitch thing. Kind of awesome, though, at the same time. And she says, yeah, the last one was positively buried in her work. Yeah. And Vincent then gets shot in the throat by Liv. Yeah. Which, based on what we've seen... Would kill him. He should be dead. Yeah, Vincent should like Vincent should have dropped like a sack of potatoes and been dead. But yeah. no, he managed to just like walk it off. Um, uh, Liv does tell him like my mom should have drowned you, which yeah. is pretty good. And uh, but Grace manages to kind of sneak up behind Liv. She flanks. Yeah, yeah. She, she, yeah. The old pincer movement. She gets behind and. Um, I've studied conflict. Yeah. I understand military strategy. And uh, like shoots shoots live in the back of the leg. Um, I think this is the same leg that's been sliced at. They're really working on that leg. Um I think it's Sweep the leg, gonna, Johnny. I think I think someone's put him in a body her, bag. <laughs> I think someone's gonna put her and uh I have a theory about Cobra Kai that we we're gonna talk about later on. Uh when I made a realization about how irresponsible the eighties were in cinema. Um <laughs> like, we'll get to we'll get to the end, but uh, like the, like she's had her leg sliced, she's been shot in the back of it. It's almost as if someone's going to put the figure four leg lock on her later on, and they're just trying to follow through continuity or oh, working on that injured leg. Oh, here comes the figure four. Oh, she's tapping. It's yeah. game over. Uh, but yeah, like oh my god, <laughs> good god almighty, they killed her. <laughs> and we've got a family. Well, she doesn't really. Her mom's dead now. Um, yeah. Well, so, she's you know the rest of her technically family, which makes all of this with Theo really creepy. But so fucking creepy. But anyway, lives uh, and so Grace is celebrating, mm -hmm. and she comes in all full of full of piss and vinegar, all like so happy with herself. And Florence just just like just making sure that she's the most hated character shoots her in the eye mm -hmm. and takes her eye out. Yeah, says an eye for a finger. Because that, that's how it was written in the Bible, Bo. I don't know if you read that, that passage. I, I've only thumbed through it. I, I don't know <laughs> exact quotes. I know the one <laughs> but, about uh, a stitch in time saves nine. That's right. And that's right. 
And he saved is a penny earned. I think that's as, as. Yep. <laughs> Did you say Deuteronomy or Deuteronomy? Both. Yep. Uh, Deuteronomy, that is the, the book of Bro. The Holy yeah, Bro. <laughs> the, the Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember that bit where, like, <laughs> like uh, Jesus' dad was actually Brosif. Uh -huh. um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's uh, Deuteronomy. There's uh, Palms, which is just a, a, a series of poems about high fives. Yep. Um, there's Brovelations. Brovelations. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, oh, that's a parody somewhere just begging to be written. Uh, but yeah, so Grace loses her fucking eye. The second book of the of the Burble, of course, is called Nexodus because it's the next <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, anyway, I'm done. Um, so Florence wins. Uh huh. Yeah, and it's just um, like, all right, O'Keefe, let's let's yeah, hit let, the bunker. Yeah, let's let's jog on to the bunker. Let's go, yeah, later losers. And, um, like, she goes down there and we're, we're kind of left with a, a family that are like, well, now what do we do? <laughs> like, because, like, we're all kind of in the same boat here. Um, and so, like, the you, we finally get a, a, a view in the bunker and it's, like, the set from that 70s show. <laughs> yeah, speaking of bros, yeah, it looks like a man cave. Yeah, it's so got like and a that mini is, fridge with pizza in it, and yeah, I think there's some like, DLs. Yeah, this is literally, literally what that, this is Cronenberg's man cave. Yeah, when he wanted to get away from, like, that's why he had food stashed in there. He could finally get something to eat without having to <laughs> stand up and march off. And get my. This is for when he has like every night when the family has a bust up, he's going to get his. He's stuff crust in a BL. Um, <laughs> right. and it's so, like, so, yeah, so they're down there. Gotta and watch Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, it's, there's like bottles of champagne and shit like that there. And like, O'Keefe, like straight away is like that. Listen, there's plenty of room in here and there's plenty of food. We should get like Vincent and Theo down here. We should do that. We should get them in here because we're all on the one team. We should get them down. Plenty of room, all the rest. And Florence, very rightly and also kind of foolishly says like that. No, if my dad says there's only two people supposed to be in here, there's only two, you don't go against these rules. Yeah. There's two people supposed to be in here. So when we go back to the house, Duncan, <laughs> and it's like the scene from Gone with the Wind when the uh, after the burning of Atlanta, where it's just bodies as far as the eye can see <laughs> like dawn is going from person to person like wrapping up grace's head wound you know checking on a bo side and that kind of thing and she ends up actually <laughs> telling um theo like hey can you go find some bed sheets because we're running out of gauze on account of all the wounds that everyone is suffering mm -hmm. so i need you to basically rip up some sheets, find some sheets that we can uh, rip up. Well, I suppose it's worth mentioning, like, because the weird thing about the house is there doesn't appear to be, like, the usual bulk of medical supplies or anything, almost as if someone had removed them deliberately. <laughs> yeah, well... Because they... this is, because well, they, they, they make a plot here to essentially ransack the, the bunker, because yeah. that's where they think everything's stored, like, all the stuff that would usually be there to help them is is you know it might be there but yeah like poor dawn is it's like it is it's like it's the like, <laughs> 10 to the second wound. i love the fact that she's like yeah i think grace has lost the eye i'm like you think look yeah. at it there is no eye yeah it's just a fucking hole and we get a shot of the orphan just eating blood from a gauze yeah and which... then vincent looking at her going what the fuck so... vampire I mean, something that orphan likes to kill. Oh, that orphan might be the kid from Let the Right One In. <laughs> right, Ely. Um, and, and so they're like, one contingent of our group is going to go check on uh, the bunker to try to get in yeah. there. Vincent Let lets slip that maybe he knows how to, I don't know, get access to things that people shouldn't be able to get access to. Hmm? 
And Liv is going to stay behind to protect Grace if somebody comes for her. Mm -hmm. And then we we get we go back to the bunker where Florence and O'Keefe are just talking about what a terrible father Cronenberg was. And we get a flashback here to Florence. This is what Dude, you were talking about. That's right. That's right now is I mean <laughs> like Florence deserves to die a painful death. And what will come is you know, if we'll welcome in the next episode, better fucking pay that off. Yeah. For all the shit she does in this show. If this is another just like weak slap on the wrists, very quick death, I am going to be hugely annoyed. Because this is, like I say, this is easily the most reprehensible character I've ever seen. So this is her bringing Theo in blindfolded mm -hmm. to see her new art project, which is an experience. Now, this is her taking the advice of the guy that's like, you need to find your own voice, your own pain and all the rest. This is how she's interpreted that, which if anything is how a psychopath interpreted uh, like helpful advice. This would be like, you know what I mean? Uh, this is it's kind of like that scene in Freddy Got Fingered where, you know, like, um, like Freddy gets told that he needs to get inside the animal. Mm -hmm. You need to get inside that animal and how he interprets that is actually physically finding roadkill gutting it and then putting it over the top of him and dancing like Leatherface in the middle of the road that's basically how she's interpreted this because he gets brought into this room and he's crunching on sand and he's like what's this I'm walking on she's like sand and I knew where this was going straight the fuck away I was like oh no and then she starts playing the police interrogation of very young Theo as to the events that happened the night his brother was abducted to Theo while he's blindfolded. Mm -hmm. And of course he has full-on panic attack and Nam-like flashbacks to kinder trauma um, and then takes the blindfold off and then... <laughs> Then he gets to drink in the visualization. <laughs> it's, so it's four screens with different reactions of Florence. You know, some laughing, some screaming, some crying. Then in the center of this art installation is a glass booth with a dummy in a don't look now rain slicker yep. sitting on a chair. And blood just starts pouring onto it. Yeah. And she says, I call this save me. And very rightly, <laughs> Theo just loses his nut. Yeah, he's fucking appalled. Like, like the like had had the character like turned around and puked in a bucket. I would have understood that reaction. Yeah, for sure. And so we go back to the present where Florence is just drinking champagne and saying, mm -hmm. you know, my children are the greatest works of art I've ever produced. And in the midst like, of this, almost, almost on cue, like yeah. as if this was like a code word that triggered a trap for Cronenberg. Yeah. He appears on, on a TV screen and he's like, you know, uh, I know you're, you're probably thinking that you're lucky to be here, but yep. this isn't about luck. Only one person can win. And so yeah. you need to you need to display the kind of ruthlessness that the person You would have to display in the boardroom, essentially. Yes. If you're taking over this company, you need to be able to stand on the throat of anyone it takes to lead this company at the boardroom. And this is kill or be killed. And in the case of this one, Bo, quite literally kill or be killed, because the room is then flooded with poisonous gas and there is an oxygen tank yes and now what's telling about this uh -huh. is that instantly o'keefe's like we can share this mask like o'keefe okay. who has shown no aptitude at all with anything including just like rudimentary objects um is like you know if we share this mask we'll survive and our mum's like, one mask. Mm -hmm. And that one mask is, guess what? Going on me. Um, yeah, yeah. it's it, Right. O'Keefe 
ultimately is going to die choking and foaming at the mouth yeah. while Florence hoards the remaining oxygen for herself. And also seems confused by the fact that her daughter doesn't have a mask. Yeah, right. Like a, re a reaction's like, well, where's your mask? <laughs> and outside, though, outside the bunker, Theo and Vincent are trying to bust in, and Vincent's like, oh, if I only had like a little piece of metal or something. Yeah. And once again, Dawn to the fucking rescue. And she's like, oh, here, take my earring and, and you can use that. Um, and then while all of this is going on, we get one more flashback. Uh, well, actually, there's two flashbacks left in this episode. Yeah. But there, one of, this one is to Theo realizing that Lawrence has recorded his reaction on seeing <laughs> the art installation for the first time. And she's then going to use in the art installation yeah. book. And he's like, what do you, like, I don't give you permission to do that. Aside from the fact that just a moral uh, yeah. code. Should yeah. Aside you. from the fact of what the fuck were you thinking? Yeah. And, uh, and Florence is like, well, if you don't like it, then sue me. Yeah. And, and then it, she's it, like, actually, that'd be great if you did that, because all that press is just going to make people want to come and see it more. And Theo tells her very rightly, you are awful and selfish. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then we're like, the next scene will prove that wrong. Oh no, look at her, watch her other child die as she hogs the fucking... Yeah, and so when, when we get back to the present and they finally get the door open, Yeah. Theo rushes inside and pulls out O'Keefe and they verify like oh dawn oh she's she's dead yeah. dawn yeah is like oh she's fucking gone <laughs> and theo is like looks at his mother and is like what did you do in there and he goes inside and he's like basically just tossing the bunker like he's looking for evidence and while he's in there he grabs some zip ties which will come into play mm -hmm. and but he comes back outside and they're just like what happened in there and this is to your point that the yeah one she's like well there was like there was gas came in and there was one mask and the and Dawn's like but you you know the, you had to share it with O'Keefe and you know she was just unlucky or something she's like no there was there was only one mask yeah and that's when the realization <laughs> kicks in that she put the mask on herself but not her daughter and then sat and watched her daughter die in front of her and this just like that Theo just fucking snaps yeah and about fucking time yeah and she's like i don't understand why everyone's acting like this and he's like because the mask was on you it should have been yeah. you dead in there yes because the mask was on you like you should have given up your life which is many years in now for your daughter yeah and I mean, we get a shot of the orphan placing some leaves on o'keefe's body yeah. who once again let us know that the orphan is crazy. Or, or as seasoning for a later snack. <laughs> right. And so Are these bay leaves? Mm. <laughs> Theo throws some zip ties on Florence's hands. And, and no one comes to our defense this time. No, no. <laughs> Not even Vincent. Actually, Vincent seems surprisingly on board with this. Everyone does because I think everyone understands what a shitty person this is. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. So they <laughs> march her like Wicker our, Man style. Yeah, to her horrific art installation that we saw in the first episode that David yeah. Kroenberg almost died laughing at. Yeah. And they basically like shove her head through one of the like it's a it. like a like a stocks yeah. or something that you would see in the old timey like town. And Theo, who is just having a field day with this, is yeah. like, I call this the trial of the mother of the fucking decade. Yeah. And this is going to serve two purposes. One, if you survive the night, it proves that you're the killer. And if yes. the killer gets you, it proves you're innocent of everything but being the worst person ever. So... Best of luck. Look at that, I, to be honest, is actually very, very much like a witch trail then. Yeah. Oh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And and so we get our final flashback of the episode, which is her getting a residency at yeah. 
you know, some art school or whatever. She's reading it out at the table and it specifically highlights the fact that they're really interested in her family trauma angle that she's got going yeah. here, which is really like... And she's all excited. And everyone at the table's displaying the right reaction, which is, I don't know if we should be celebrating this. And then Cronenberg, who's like that, God, that I'm not going to finish this fucking meal either. <laughs> I mean, uh, and Jesus. Once again, <laughs> um, yeah, and he's like, you're making money off of the pain of this family and, and a personal tragedy that befell this family. And he, he calls her pathetic. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm thinking Cronenberg knows that Vincent's alive, which is like, like he he knows that he's hidden somewhere and he's behind that, and he's like, and I'm like, mm. and I understand the, I understand the hat, you know, the the high horse that you decided to sit on there, but maybe take it down a notch or two, Cronenberg. Um, but yeah, he's like, oh for like, oh for God's sake, with that, and we essentially end this episode with once again. Only one death of a inconsequential character that wasn't really vital, important, or was going to be doing much, and setting up what will be the death of the next one into episode six, three from the end. Still, so many people alive on this island. Yeah, we we need some bloodbaths to. to start we need happening. people gone quick. Like we have got Don, we have got Afra, we've got Liv, Theo, um, we've got Grace. Uh, Florence, who's still alive, and Vincent, and three episodes left. Yeah, it's a lot of characters. Um, all right, so th yeah, the the last moments of the episode are just Florence tied to this sculpture. I don't screaming. want to die, is yeah. what she says. And um, do we have like I don't have any further theories because no the, the just... doctor death is behind us yeah. like 100... now that we know that cronenberg is at he designed that room for someone to die yeah and we're right. going to so learn any... something horrifying yeah. about the orphan that's the other thing. anything that relates to oh there just happens to be a killer on the island or even my original theory which was well maybe he's hired doctor death to kill him and she's went in for in a business for herself all that's gone Cronenberg has set this up that there will only be, you know, there will only be like the person that walks off this island yeah. is the sole heir because it can everyone be else only is one. There. Essentially, yeah, he's pulled a Highlander. Yeah. Um, so like he's behind this, and to me, there's only one character, even logically, that could be in on this, and that's that's Doctor Death. So like, and once again, I'm I'm comfortable with that. But there's this episode, it was all smoke and mirrors. There is no substance at all. It didn't push any story, really. Um, and it didn't kill off a character that needs to fucking go. Like, she needs to be gone. We don't need to have that as a cliffhanger. Florence is never winning the money. Why is that a cliffhanger? Like, you know, like some someone like a, a Theo being in danger or a Liv being in danger at the end of an episode... That's a cliffhanger because we're like, well, we thought they would be there at the end. This is a waste. And uh, I, I once again, I I actively hate this series. Like, I actively hate it. I I I, I, I genuinely. This to me is every worst. Everything that's bad about slasher that we've seen in snippets. Yeah. From all the other series in one season. I um, I, I don't disagree with any of that. Yeah. I, uh, like I was telling you in the upfront, I think that the solstice season is more mean spirited. But uh -huh. this is, yeah, it definitely is. Definitely is. This is more boring and unsurprising and yeah, just shoddily written. It's it like if this is where you are at your fourth season, like I understand why you know under if you're Arden Martin, why you're excited because you're being greenlit for a season five. It must get to the point where he thinks to himself, right, maybe I can put this behind me. And then he gets more money flung at him and he's like, well, maybe we're back doing Flasher again. It's just the most un... It's just the most uninspired, like, low-rent shit that I've, yeah. I've watched in a while. And I, 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 every time I... And the thing that I think is the confusing aspect, that I don't base what I think my opinion on stuff will be off the internet because that's a fool's errand. But 
the fact that people were like, well, it's better than season three, or it's, you know, it's actually not that bad. It just, it boggles my mind how anyone can come away even thinking that. I, it's, I like, no one should be happy about their involvement with this season. I, yeah, I, I don't disagree. Um, yeah, the, yeah, this is uh, this is a rough one, but we've only got three left, and then we can three left. I can't, I can't, I cannot fucking we end of May, we will be done with yeah. this show. It, yeah, it, and we will be able to start anew, yes, uh, with, with some stuff that's actually potentially pretty good. Um, yeah, I, can, I cannot, those conversations are going to be gold, my friend. Gold, uh, all right. Well, Duncan, where can people find more out of you between now and when next we speak? Please check me out on Podcasts Under the Stairs and Teapots Collective. Teapots Collective rapidly pushing an amazing series of shows doing the nasty looking at C- uh, Section 3 video nasties uh, titles, myself and Mark Ball, about sit down and do a Friday the 13th movie, the very first one, which was on the Tier 3 list um, <laughs> for no other reason than... Uh, yeah, it, it had blood in it, maybe. I don't know. Fucking who cares? Um, where to begin with? Continuing to look at film noir, neo noir. The movie that the listeners are reviewing just now is Strangers on a Train. Uh, the movie that I have, uh, I'm about to review that they'll be reviewing next is uh, a certain little movie which I think is mwah, Chef's Kiss, which is Brick. Um, oh, and yeah. the, the neo noir category because I think that's like that is just Perfect fucking movie. all good. Um, if you are checking out the opera Omnias, it is coming back in April with a brand new director and a brand new resident host for a shorter season, but one that will hopefully keep you all occupied. And then, yeah, we just put out an episode of Chronicle where myself and the Baz sat and talked about uh, The Vanishing from 1988. On the main feed of teapots, it's all the usual stuff coming your way. There will be a Russian roulette this month looking at the Hannibal franchise um, and other bits and bobs in the background. Very excitedly, we have announced uh, what's happening for summer series this year and the draw was last night. So um, the busy work will uh, will begin from there. All that stuff can be found at teaputscast.com or wherever you listen to podcasts, either search Teapots Collective or Podcast Under the Stairs. Bo Ransdell. What about you? Uh, you can find pretty much everything I do over at legionpodcasts.com, where you can find not just this show, but uh, you can find The Dark Parade, which is uh, much like Podcasts Under the Stairs. Um, it also uh, has a summer series, uh, has an upcoming <laughs> episode with the Baz. No, no, no. Um it is, uh, 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 we're about to launch into April, which is nothing but 80 slashers. Nice. So, um, we're doing, it started off with April Fool's Day, and we're doing some Happy Birthday to Me, and we're doing some Hell Night, and we're doing My Bloody Valentine. Uh, so all of that stuff is coming up. Um, and uh, Heart of Horror with Kate Pollock. Uh, recently, we did an episode on uh, Kiss of the Damned. And a it's discussion. a great fucking movie. It's, it's a, a great terrific. fucking movie. And, and a discussion of what is sexy that includes some stories about choking that you'll probably enjoy. Nice. Um, yeah. And uh, what you're watching with Jamie and Bo, which is Jamie Sammons and myself, just kind of rapping about movies and uh, yeah, lots of stuff. Uh, and then uh, last but certainly not least is Pick Six Movies, which just wrapped season 19 of that show. Holy fucking shit. Yeah. So um, we are launching season 20, which is called Bombs Away, which is notorious box office bombs. <laughs> um and the first give me a tease in a title there uh cutthroat island is the first episode oh man and the thing is i actually have a lot i know you're gonna eviscerate it because that's what you do i have a lot like gina davis is so pretty in that movie is unbelievable but yeah they spent that that bankrupt that company that ultimately bankrupted caralco and yeah and I, I don't disagree that Gina Davis is beautiful in that movie. I also don't think she's the right person for that. Oh, a hundred percent. No, 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 no. It's like that. That movie has got the worst casting of all time. It's like some of the, like, so like, honestly, like the, across the board yeah. has some of the worst casting I've ever seen. Yeah. So, so uh, all of that still is still better than those pirates of the Caribbean movies though. So there you yeah, are. Yeah, the first one fired. is okay. The first one's uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I think after that, it 
it, it I, I would rather watch the first Pirates of the Caribbean than watch Cutthroat Island again because I've had to watch that movie a lot recently to do my notes and everything for it. And it's a slog, man. That movie. It's a long movie. It's a long, expensive movie. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see where the money went. It just yeah. isn't good. Anyway. Yeah. But like when we're saying, what would we rather watch here? Would we rather watch the first Pirates of the Caribbean, Cutthroat Island, or Muppet's Treasure Island? And Muppet's Treasure Island oh. comes out on top. Absolutely. You've got Tim don't Curry need, as. Yeah. You don't need to spend yeah. all the money in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, 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 that's a no brainer. Um, all right. Uh, all, the only thing left to do then, uh, other than to say we will be back in two weeks' time to do more of this nonsense, is to say to my good friend Duncan, say good night, Duncan. Just to say to my friend, my good friend Duncan, good night, Duncan. Ah, I don't even know if that was right, but yeah, who cares? It's all just nonsense. Ah.